Thank you for joining McCormick in video number five, Bid Summary. So now that we are in Bid Summary, you can see to the top left hand side, Materials. Materials amount is $6,953. This came directly from the extension report. So you sent this information here. The other thing that you will notice is that there's a red window around the costs. So this red window is indicating that you have to do something still. And if we look to the left, there's a little checkbox in labor telling you you have to fix labor. So within bid summary, to finish up your different tasks here, we're going to go through each one of these tabs at the bottom of the screen. So let's do that. Let's finish up labor first. So if I click into labor, it's going to show me that I have 273 man hours remaining. So from your remaining man hours, you are now going to assign these to a line item down here. So you can manually fill in your line item. So I could put in the percentage of hours. I want 100% of the hours to a $25 rate. So I could type all this in, or I can have all of my information already entered in here. So uh, in setup, you're going to want to go into groups here. And when you go into groups, you can actually set up your different labor groups. And this is where you're going to have each labor class, your rates, your different burdens. You can set up your burden here at the bottom right. But this is actually where you set up all of your rates. So let's go back and let's finish up our labor. So when I click on back onto labor, you see all of my, my workers or my classes set up here. I'm just going to go ahead and click a foreman class and then you see your arrow here. You're going to push that class over to the right, and this is actually where you do your work. So let's push that class over there, and let's push, well, we'll say an apprentice class. So if I use that black arrow again, it pushes the information to the right, and now I can assign these hours to these rates. And I can, again, give it any sort of percentage I wanted to. I can actually type in the actual hours. But uh, to make it easy, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give the foreman 50% of the hours and I'm going to give the apprentice 50% of the hours. So as soon as I click off of that last box there, it now shows me 50% or 136.67 hours at these rates will come to this amount of dollars. So your total dollars will be at the bottom here and it's even giving you an average labor rate. So that is how easy it is to assign your extended man hours to a rate. So if I were to go back to the top sheet now, there you go. Now you can see you've got material in here. You have got labor cost in here. So if we look all the way to the right, it's starting to add up. You've got a total raw cost of 15 grand. Taxes are at zero. Raw cost with tax, 15000 so far. So we're going to continue on with the bid summary, and we're going to put in some other costs here. So let's go to quotes first. So if we had any quoted items, if we had to call out a quote to our suppliers, we could simply input the amount as soon as we receive those quotes back from our suppliers into these boxes here. So if I had a fixture quote, I would simply type in, my fixture quote came back and it was at $1,800. Okay. I have a generator or miscellaneous. Of course, this is customizable. You can add as many line items that you would like. So let's go ahead and put a miscellaneous quote in there for $500. Easy enough. So again, when I go back to my top sheet, as you can see, it will now add up that sheet for you now totaling to your right hand side here, raw cost with tax. So let's continue on. We have subcontractors. Did we have any subcontractors on this job? We can easily stick that in here. So we had a $1,200 fire alarm charge. And throw that in there. Let's continue on. We have direct job expenses. Did we have uh, any permits and fees? Let's throw that in here, 800. Uh, fuel and gas, maybe you want to charge uh, 80 bucks a day and we're going to be on the job for 14 days. So there you go, I'll actually multiply that out and do the math to the right. So very easy, we're done with direct job expenses, we can move on to equipment rental. 
here is your equipment rental. So again, you throw in any sort of unit charges that you have. The next table we have is a bond table. And how the bond table works is you set this up one time. So you would put in a cost, zero to 100,000 would be a 5% bond. Now 100,000 to say to a million, would be a 3% bond and a million to 5 million would be a 1% bond. So you would set this bond table up in your sample job and every time you may choose to use the bond table or not. So I will go into that here shortly when we get back to the top sheet, but it's just that simple to set up your bond table. And the next tab we have here is the tax tab. We won't be going into proposal this video, so we'll end it at the tax tab. So let's throw in some tax rates here. So maybe uh, material is 8.8%. So you will notice I did enter in some supplier quotes, but the tax rate, there is no taxable amount in there. That is because if I go back to my quoted section here, in the middle, you have a taxable box. So if you want these to be able to be taxed, you're gonna to have to just check off these boxes here. Now it will bring those totals to your tax section here. And as you can see, you now have a taxable amount. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll put 8.8% on there also. So very easy to set up each tab here. Um, we go, let's go back to our top sheet and let's finish the job off here. So now we have all of our cost in here. Here's my material cost, labor, quotes cost, subcontractors. Again, we look to the right. We have our raw cost with tax at $21,000. Overhead zero, profit zero. We have not made any money on this job yet. So let's go ahead and throw those figures in here. If you notice up here to the top left, you have your cost. And directly to the right of your cost, you have your overhead and your profit. Now we can either enter in a dollar amount or a percentage, and you can do this for each line item all the way down. Or we can use our boxes here in the middle. These will adjust everything, so you can adjust overhead to, we'll say 12%. You click on that percent there, and there you go. You can see every box has is lit up with a 12. Same thing with profit. Let's go ahead and fill in profit. We're gonna make profit 13%. There's profit. And of course, even though we did blanket these cells, we can come back and we can change these individually. So maybe on labor, I wanted 15% overhead. And maybe on those uh, quoted items, I wanted to make a little bit more. I wanted 17% profit on those. So there you go. Individual totals now. There's your material cost, overhead, profit. Labor cost, overhead, profit. We add this all up. There's your total overhead, 2692. Profit at 3108. Total return, $5,801.74. We have a percentage we're making here of 21.45% on the job. That brings us to a price of $27,044. Now, if we had to bond this job, we use bond table. As soon as I click that, you will see that it fills in your bond automatically and gives you a sell price. So our sell price for this job is $28,396. If we wanted to fill in the rest of these boxes here, we're simply gonna fill in these four empty ones on the left. So square feet, we can go ahead and fill that in. Say this is just a 1,200 square foot job. Job months, we want to get this job done in one month. At 40 hours a week, if I click off of that, it shows you on average how many workers you're going to need per day. So I'm going to need about one and a half workers per day to get this job done in one month. And of course, it does work in reverse if I were to change my workers. Say I wanted to throw three workers per day on this job. It now tells you how long this job's gonna take you. So three workers a day, 0.53, about a half a month it's gonna take you to finish this job. If we look up top, we have our sales per month now. We have our return per month, our price per square foot, and our hours per square foot. So this 
is your bid summary. We have finished a job. We have completed everything. You have many bid summaries here. So after you're finished with your base bid, you can send more bid summaries to summary two, summary three, summary four. You can have as many bid summaries on a job that you want. So each summary can be a change order or an alternate. Each summary can have its own overhead, its own profit, its own labor. So with McCormick, you have the ability to price out many, many jobs within one project in the McCormick estimating software. That is the end of our basic video series. If you have any further questions, please call McCormick Tech Support. Thank you very much and have a great day.